Hey guys, Tom Mobo back again. This is day 14 in the life of the Google Pixel 7 Pro. But, we, but before we jump into that, let me give you some of my thoughts. First of all, the camera bar does get scratched pretty easily. If you look at here closely, there's a couple dings here and there. This is from normal usage, taking my phone in and out of my pocket. I guess occasionally I might have keys or another phone in my pocket. But in general, I try to keep my phone in its own separate pocket. But you know, sometimes life happens and it can't get scratched. It does accumulate dust around the camera bar as well. You do see some black dust picking up here. The white model looks a lot better than the black. I think the black model does stand out more in terms of all the dust accumulation. But the Pixel 7 Pro white color does still pick up dust. Just not as much. So just something to keep in mind if you think about getting a Pixel series, I would not recommend the black one. Maybe get the white one or that cool looking green one. Either way, it's a flawed camera design. We'll see if Google will do anything to address it or they just might keep doubling down with the Pixel design that they decide to go forward with. And I mentioned in my prior videos that gaming does make the phone pretty hot. So even if you do like gaming anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, the phone itself does feel noticeably hotter. And then I noticed that in one instance, when I'm using my favorite recording app for transcription, but you cannot view the live transcription when the phone is hot. So it's just something to keep in mind there. And I noticed that the Pro model is actually more buggy than the regular 7 in general. Sometimes when I'm launching a game, it only opens up in a portion of the screen. Not sure what's going on there. It almost looked like it's trying to open up in full HD, even though the phone is capable of having quad HD. So it's just shrink to a corner. And it pretty much stay that way unless you hit the home button, then maybe just for this particular game, but it'll readjust back to the full screen eventually. And the most annoying part about the Pro phone is certain games like this one right here. If you swipe home, it just wouldn't work sometimes. I just gotta swipe like 5, 10, 20 times and keep going crazy until I can eventually get back to the home screen. Well, I hope I have some other notification that come in and I can click on that and then it will eventually navigate me away. So it's just a really weird software bug that's going on with the Pro model. And just to test it out, I open up the same game on the right regular Pixel 7 and no issues there with navigating between the home screen and the game. So just weird stuff going on with the Pro. And I mentioned in prior videos when Google first pushed out the label features to the Pixel phones, I actually got on my regular Pixel four days in advance, but basically the first day that it was available. But for the Pro model, the speaker label wasn't available until four days later. For me, it didn't matter since I have both phones, but if I were to only own the Pro phone, I would be really confused during those four days and not getting the latest and greatest software updates that was promised to me. Another software issue that I noticed with the Pro model is launching the camera. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes when I first open up the camera, whether it's a camera or a video, it is automatically out of focus and it pretty much just stays that way. I've been trying to capture this, <laughs> but it's kind of hard because every time I want to record it, it works normally. But it happens enough for me to even notice it. And it's a pretty quick fix. You can just switch between the setting, like it was on video, if you switch to a camera mode and back, then everything will be back in focus again. Sometimes you tap on the screen, it will refocus. But just the fact that you even have to even think about that step or worry about it, it is enough to be an issue. For example, if you're trying to capture some quick moment that is happening right away, you want to pull out your phone, just quickly double tap to launch the camera, you want to snap a quick picture and then be on your way. You don't want to have to fumble around with playing around the settings and restarting the camera app. So that in itself makes the camera unreliable for me. I never had this issue with the regular Pixel 7, but for some reason the Pro have so many little weird software bugs still going on even after the December 5th update. Alright, now I'm going to jump into day 14 in the life of the Google Pixel 7 Pro. But I did want to give you guys that little update with my experience so far before diving into another day in the life. So day 14, woke up at 6 a.m., sent a Snapchat to my friends, 
reminding them that every day we should try to improve by 1%. Just little things in life, we're just trying to do baby steps to be a little bit better than yesterday. If yesterday you did not get your 10,000 steps, then go for 100 steps. And the day after that, do 101 step, maybe 200 steps. But either way, you get the idea. So I sent that along to my friends early in the morning for fun. And then today, decide to incorporate some at-home workout into my life. Have YouTube play in the background on my screen while I'm just exercising. Then once it's time for work, finally activated the speaker labels on my Google Pixel 7 Pro. The label is still unreliable, but I do want it there just in case. Oh, another thing I would have liked to see is for them to backdate all the labels in my previous recordings. That would have been cool if Google could find a way to do that. But for now, it is only on new recordings. For breakfast, we got some eggs. Here's a macro egg. Added some tomatoes. Sent another Snapchat to my friend. Here's the farming game that I've been playing with recently. And since I was playing with that game, it caused the phone to get really hot. And then when I went into my meeting and had the recording app on, I cannot see the live transcription because the phone is so hot. Good news is all the transcription still took place so I can still view the recording and look at all the notes afterwards. I just wasn't able to see it live. But I did want to record it and show to you guys that this phone does get really hot playing basic games. At 11.40 a.m. my phone is at 39%. It was somewhat of a busy work day. Yet somehow my phone managed to die pretty quickly. By 3 o'clock it is at 7%. So I decided to do a battery check. So in terms of usage, since I've been awake, I have the recording app running in the background for 2.5 hours. That is taking up 13% of my battery. Had a little camera usage as well for 15 minutes and somehow that drained 11% of my battery. Got Google Photos in the back, some light gaming, and two and a half hours of screen on time. That is unbelievable. And roughly seven hours of idle time. Still terrible battery life, by the way. It's only about nine hours. I've been awake since 6 a.m. and the phone is pretty much almost dead. I'll give another half hour, so nine and a half hours. I still have Quad HD, 120 hertz refresh rate, and everything running in the background. That's not looking promising. It's probably one of the worst days I had with the Google Pixel 7 Pro in terms of battery life. I do have adaptive battery running on since I had the phone for what it's worth. Alright, close to 3.30, it is at 1%. So, there you have it. Nine and a half hours of battery life on day 14th. And of course, I just plugged it in, continue to work for the rest of the day after work, drive to get dinner, and the phone is on it's second life. Sent another snapchat to my friends. We're going for hot pot for dinner. Here's a slow-mo of the boiling pot. Some POV view for you guys of me eating dinner. Then I finally decided to go into my settings and turn off quad HD and switch back to full HD. We'll see if this helped with the screen on time. I don't know why I've only been getting two to three hours of screen on time. On light usage day, the idle time is great. I've seen days where I get anywhere from 12 to 14 hours in total if I don't use my phone. But once I start using my phone, just doing light usage, Twitter, YouTube, texting, it averaged like 10% an hour drop. And then if I'm doing any gaming or a lot of camera usage, it will drop even faster. And I finally turn off 120 hertz refresh rate as well. Don't really think I need it or really notice the difference. So we'll see if this will improve battery for day 15 and going forward. At nighttime, decide to change my wallpaper to one of these Google default ones. Decide to go for this live green grass looking one. I do like that the background does adapt with the time of the day. So since it's nighttime, everything is dark. Pretty sure that will save my battery. And during the day, everything looks brighter. 
I pretty much turn off all the other quad HD, 120 hertz and everything, so might as well still use some kind of live wallpaper just to keep things interesting. There you guys have it. Day 14 in the life of the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Woke up super early at 6 a.m. Phone died around 3.30 p.m. in the afternoon. Had to recharge it again if I want to go out on a Friday. So, so far, based on everything that I have discussed, I don't think the Pro model is worth the extra $300 unless you really want the larger screen, the 120 hertz refresh rate, and the Quad HD. It's more unstable than the regular Pixel 7 in my opinion and all the additional benefits like the 120Hz refresh rate and the Quad HD actually kills the screen on time. So now I'm forced to turn it off just to see if there's going to be any, any improvement. Gaming is awful on the Pro model, it makes the phone heat up so much. But the regular model, I did not experience that. Please check out day 13 if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover or if you have any questions. Please like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video.